Commandments, you know, you don't steal, you don't murder, uh, ideals of right and wrong that hopefully are written on most people's hearts. Uh, and to the left here we have a man from Chinese culture, Confucius. Uh, he, that painting is called The Recording of Precedences. He's uh, writing down decisions so you can refer back to it. And we do that today in the legal system to refer to similar decisions and try to make wise decisions. We like to work out in nature. Uh, so you see the waterfall, see the also a musician, you see a liar, or a, a string instrument there. Uh, behind us, this represents ancient Greece. The man standing there with his hand upturned is Socrates. They're debating the rights of the individual versus the rights of the state, something we still kind of wrestle with uh, today. And then finally, this person here in the right and the blue is from Toulouse, France, from medieval France. And he, this depicts mediation. At that time, five, six hundred years ago, if you had a dispute, you just fight it out. You can see his hand on the sword. He doesn't want to resort to violence. Uh, through mediation, each side gives a little bit, each side gets a little bit, is a, a suitable way to make a decision. Anybody know what our last word lacks means? We see it written in four places. Law. Law, exactly right. We're all under the law in a civilized society. Uh, this beautiful railing is called the bar. Some of you might be attorneys or, or will be. Uh, uh, you uh, have to go to law school and pass a pretty extensive exam called the bar exam. We borrow this terminology from the British legal system. They call attorneys barristers. Uh, and if you pass that bar exam, you may literally pass through the bar in a court of law uh, and represent clients and, and, uh, and try to do the right thing uh, by the law. The rest of us mere mortals have to stay back here. <laughs> so, uh, uh, any questions? Let's take a few more places. Yeah, let's set this way for Wow. Wow. Hmm? Yeah. That was uh, a lot already. Yeah, you just step down that green square. I'll lock up our door and then we'll be on our way. <laughs> So this is the grand uh, second floor of our capital. All the entries to the important chambers are your House of Representatives, Senate, Supreme Court. We see these beautiful marble pillars from around the world, uh, from Italy, France, Africa, United States. Beautiful marble to kind of depict this grand, important building. This happens to be an Italian marble with a French name. It's called uh, Breche Violette. You see violet, some violet hues in this marble. So it makes for a very beautiful, formal space. Wonderful. Let's uh, head up to the House of Representatives now. We'll, we'll go to the chamber. Well, perfect. All right.
is now it's the well effect. <laughs> just because that's kind of cool. But I think this one is the same <laughs> Okay. Well, welcome to the Minnesota House Chamber. I don't see Rita here yet, but she'll come down. She's a One of the things I want to show you about this room that makes it very unique in here is that it's rounded. It's like a theater. It's the only chamber in America that's like that. They're all square, including our Senate. <clears throat> so one of the cool features of this room is it's an acoustically perfect room. It opened in 1905, and microphones weren't invented. So the architect, Cass Gilbert, designed this as an acoustically perfect room. What I want to do is show you that. So Representative Nora is here, but I want you to kind of, I'm going to go to where I stand, and I want you to kind of go through here in an early fashion, and you, you know what I'm showing them to you. So where you are, Representative Norris, you know, so kind of guide them through that area behind my Lily's chair there. Right. So have everybody, you know, have everybody kind of walk through behind you as you walk through the, behind there, right through there, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. How it picks up my voice. Yes. Yeah. So kind of walk, kind of in an early fashion, everybody, so you kind of feel that. It's quite unique, you oh, see how it, yeah. It's, 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 it's like a microphone. Oh, okay. We know how stressful it can get to take care of the health care needs of your loved ones, especially when they live far away from you. Money transfer services have expensive fees. They cannot ensure that your money is spent on the intended health care needs. 
and there are many questionable pharmacies that sell low quality, unsafe, and even counterfeit medications. That is why we created Diaspo Care, a secure, quick, and cost-effective way to pay for the medications of your loved ones through our network of accredited and registered pharmacies. So here's how it works. Meet David. He lives far away from home. Unfortunately, his mother was recently diagnosed with diabetes, but she can't afford her new medication. So after funding his Diaspo Care account, David enrolls his mother as a beneficiary, and a unique PIN code is issued. Think of this as a digital voucher that David paid for in advance. David's mother presents the PIN code at one of our accredited and registered in-network pharmacies. The cost of her medication is deducted from David's account, and his mother can walk in and out of the pharmacy with the medication she needs. It's as easy as that. David can also assign his uncle, who lives close to his mother as a caretaker, to help her follow the new diabetes treatments. For extra security, David can also create one-time PIN codes and manually confirm and approve medication purchases too. It's easy to send more money home and hope they got spent on buying safe medication. But what if you can have control over how your money is spent, gain access to safe and quality medication, and purchase multiple medications for multiple family members who are in need? Your money goes a lot farther, and healthcare becomes a lot more inclusive. Diaspo Care was created by Diaspora members, for Diaspora members, that help provide greater access to safe, quality, and affordable medications for your loved ones back home. It's time for your loved ones to get the quality medication they need, and for you to get the peace of mind you deserve. Sign up today and register your loved ones for free at diaspocare.com. One good picture for him alone, please. Yes. Just alone. Even with mom. With mom. This is the most powerful picture. Okay. Can, can I get okay. one, please? Please. Okay. Kenya. Kenya. He was hanging out with Nelson Mandela. Wow. Yes. Royalty. Martin Luther King of Africa. Martin Luther King of Africa. Man, look wow. at this. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was telling him about Steve, how he does the rites of passage to take brothers to Africa. Uh, try to get once a year. They, I think they got one coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a lot of brothers have got their passports. Yeah, so 38 countries in Africa. So we work with young people. I think that I did. Yes, yes. I just wanted to leave guys that's doing that over here for the young folks. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, okay. So if I can jump in too, he is a world-renowned um, and activist. Like, he is a world-renowned lawyer, not only in Africa, but on the African continent, and not only because it comes from my country, Kenya, but he is a global icon in terms of, you know, just bringing a development to growth. Um, and, and basically, given us Africans the power to voice that we can lead our own countries, that we can bring in the resources and the solutions is to come from Africa, the African people mm, around. So he's here in the US on a US tour basically preaching that uh, that vision about us Africans coming together and, and basically coming up with our own solutions. Uh, so how long you guys in town? They're leaving tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, look. Yeah. I had a um, one at Chop It Up. Man. Oh, I like that that chicken. would chop yeah. it up. Yeah, out of the night. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> This is the real life coming to America. So, so you probably understand him, but he is a I'm, huge I'm, icon. icon. He is a huge icon for sure. He yes. looks like a powerful king. Yes. Yes. 
Oh, your phone? Your so the last two days we've just been, you know, in conversation about what does that look like? What it's does the diaspora, you know, do you want to do? Yes, we want to give you, he wants to give you something. Thank you. Can, can we take a picture yeah, of that, take a please? Picture. Yeah, take a picture. Yeah. Okay. You guys want some water? No, no I'm saying we that is that is just a gift for you. I appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes. Yes. Maybe it's a gift for you. you Thank you, sir. Your work. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. going to give a brief, a brief um, remarks, yes. a brief remark. Can I go live? Yeah. Through Facebook? Absolutely. Oh, yes. You yes. can. You can. You can. You can. I'd like um, to give people a bird's eye view of what's going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'll give, he'll give, he'll give the, uh, yeah. the remarks after the NSAC, N, N, A, uh, yes, and, yeah, remark, if it's a remark. Can, yeah, okay. We want to stand behind him. Okay, we stand behind him. First of all, thank you very much, guys, for letting us to come over here from the PLO Mumbas Foundation. Um, we are indebted because it's representing the whole of Africa a great Pan-Africanist and that's why we're actually here with you guys. So before he gives a, a, a few remarks, we would like you guys also to tell him exactly a little bit of your experience, then um, he'll give a remark. Especially you, both of you. Yeah. 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 Do you have my phone? Okay. Yeah. Do you have my phone? So, okay. yes. Make it short, make it hard. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Hello, I'm Angela Harrelson. I am um, George Floyd's aunt. And I first want to say thank you all for coming here. Um, the community welcomes you with open arms. Um, this past year has been an emotional roller coaster. And there's a support around the world from, from people all over the world, from Kenya, where you're from. We appreciate it. We embrace it. Um, we're humble. And I want to personally thank you for coming out here so far away um, to pay respect for my family. And um, I can see how much it means to all of you. And um, we're just moved, we just moved by it. And I just want to say thank you. And my name is Chevelle Webb, and I am a black woman in America, and my parents migrated from Mississippi. My father fought in the segregated army in World War II. He came back home and did not vote. Uh, he's a U.S. citizen and he was not allowed to vote. They were sharecroppers. My mother would pick 300 pounds of cotton a day for 50 cents if they paid her. So they migrated up here only to find that there was more discrimination in the North or just as much in the South. And they want us to that we don't have a place here. This is our country too. We built this country. It belongs to us. And my family was impacted by, in 1973, my brother-in-law was shot in the back by my And um, right, his daughter was born a month later. He never was able to see his child. And so as a black woman in America, I know firsthand the injustice that we, we experience as black people. Um, on every level. I have black sons, so this is near and dear to me. You know, I have nephews, I have five brothers, I have cousins, uncles, and this is, you know, could happen to any of us. And if we're silent, it'll happen again and again, and we have to start speaking out. And that's why it, they're mad at us, they don't want us to voice how we feel, but enough is enough, and it's been going on forever. It's Jim Crow all over again. It's the Kent Klan all over again. And we have to stop. So I'm glad that you came and visited us here. Um, they say Minnesota nice, but it's Minnesota ice. <laughs> so um, don't let them fool you. <laughs> so I just want you to know that you know our prayers are with you. I pray for you. I pray for black men in, in Minnesota yes. specifically, but everywhere because this could happen to any of us, you know? And I mean, I was beat up by a cop once in 2000 or in the 90s. And so I was going to church and he thought I was lying. It was a Friday night. So they've been getting away with murder. I mean, literally. And 
you know, abuse. So we have to stop, you yes. know, on every level, you know, wherever in your community, we have to stop it. So um, I'm thankful that his life is not, his death is not in vain. You know, we're going to do something and we have to speak out. If you don't, it'll continue. So God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me first say how saddened we are and we humbly beseech you to accept our heartfelt condolences following the very sad demise of George Floyd at this very spot. He may be physically gone, but is now immortalized in the minds and hearts of men who seek justice. Uh, the words of Martin Luther King Jr. during the Civil Rights Movement, uh, that injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere, is given fresh meaning and was indeed given life to man's inhumanity at this very spot. When George Floyd so very famously but painfully said, I can't breathe. And there is a sense in which we all can't breathe. Yes. But we will breathe again. Yes. And we must breathe again. Yes. Always this is a magical place. This is real, y'all. Some of the stuff we've been doing. We are here. Uh, we got one of the representatives from the NAACP of Washington, D.C. We do a lot of cool things. We walk the streets. Uh, just serving our neighborhood. Uh, we kind of do a whole bunch of door, but it's our schedule for the month. That's what we do community meetings, Mondays and Wednesdays. We do a lot of outreach, go to some of the homeless encampments, feed the homeless. We got a thing called 21 Days of Peace. It was a bunch of kids that got killed over North Minneapolis. And uh, we're just going to the hot spots where a lot of crime activity and just standing in the space, feeding the community, and uh, just being a presence. We're not going there trying to be preachy. Uh, some of us are Christians. We got a couple Muslim brothers, and we got a couple of people that, just, that don't believe. Here goes one of our mentors out here coming in, uh, Johnny Turnipseed. That's one of my mentors. He told me, be what I needed growing up. Like I said, hey, Bridge, hey, we got company, come down, check some out. Bridget, come on down. So that's some of the stuff we've been doing. We got pictures of stuff we've been doing right here. Just hitting the street, we just got a little plaque from uh, what we've been doing in the community, the Gabe movement. Uh, look, we had hundreds and thousands of people out here during that first couple months. And uh, 
we're just going out here and just trying to help our community whatever way we can. How you doing, Mr. Turner? I'm good. This is one. This is one of my mentors. If a guy told me, "Be what you needed growing up." And he he runs a big organization, and uh, I look up to guys like that that are doing this. He's one of the founders. Get over here, brother. Look how you. <laughs> He's one of the other founders of the God Made Movement. This is it's a. It's a Pan Africanist. Pan African brother. A Pierre Lumumba. Professor Pierre Lumumba. Representative from the NAACP in St. Paul. How you doing? You know, they're holding space, man, and checking it out. I'm leading Angela. Angela's been ducked off. I mean, but this is one of the other founders, Reggie Ferguson, that was out here. And uh, Tommy, Johnny Turner, see the man that's trying to hold it down and do some positive things in the neighborhood on Marquis. And uh, we're just holding space with our community and building as, as black men, trying to create a different narrative than what the media tries to put out there. They're all killers and rapists and all the other garbage that we try to pay us to be. We just are here standing up as men, trying to do something positive in our community, protect our queens, and uh, just build jobs and opportunities for the brothers that are still out there struggling, that's alive. I mean, we've been out here before George Floyd got murdered, and no disrespect to him, but we still fighting for people that's still out here living, because we still got to go on. And uh, we're just trying to do something positive in the neighborhood. And, uh, Thank you very much. We'll meet you when you come to Nairobi in the month of October. Hey, uh, Reg, do you know where they take, uh, you know, do, do you know about uh, the thing Steve Floyd got to taking people to Africa, the rights of passage? Do you know exactly where they be taking them? Um, yeah, Senegal. Senegal, and they're going to Gambia. Okay, this is one of our brothers, Corey Bird. This is Bridget Stewart. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we we'll coordinate with you. We have uh, presence in Gambia and, and in Senegal and see what little contribution we can make. Wow. Oh, appreciate very it. nice. We appreciate that. Thank you. 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 Hey, Hi. Hi. How are you? I couldn't come to the capital. I was. Uh, I really wanted to
ขี้ขี้ขี้ขี